Welcome back then folks to the second build out of 10 of course in Special Projects Pack number 8. This time we are revisiting an aftermarket tuner which is not only iconic to Gran Turismo but of course that I have featured cars from before. I think this is actually the third Mines build that I've done so far. I did the Mines R34, the Mines R32 and now of course the Mines Evo. We had to do it eventually. There are still a few more Evo builds that I plan to do in different styles. This one was a weapon in Gran Turismo as far, well, as recently, technically, as Gran Turismo 6. I must admit, I never used this car as much as the Skylines, but it was definitely a very strong Evo, that's for sure. As far as the parts, I bought a few different things to find out which would work best for getting those Gran Turismo 6 style numbers. And of course, I will have put on screen, if you want this particular design that the player has gone for, then you can grab that by clicking the link in the description and of course adding it to your library. The only thing that I would recommend changing is I changed the rims because the rims that the player used aren't bad, but I think the, the Oz rims that you can find, the five spokes that I'm running, those are actually more accurate visually to what the Mines Evo looked like. So I'll leave it down to you. You don't have to change it, but for me it was just a slight visual change that I wanted to make. So as far as the parts, we've got the sports computer, the sports air filter, I believe if we jump forward just a little bit, you don't need the sports computer because as you can see I've got the race one. Like I said, I did. Uh, I tried a few different things to try and get it as close to the spot on numbers as I could. We've got the sports air filter, you don't need the sports silencer, we'll come back to the exhaust in a second so don't bother buying that one. We've got the stage one weight reduction, I've left it on sports hard tyres because again it is a street car so I'll leave it up to you if you want to go further than that. As far as the other stuff, we've got stage 2 weight as well. The power restrictor and the ballast is fitted. For the semi-racing stuff, like I said, you do want the ECU. The semi-racing silencer is the exhaust that I would recommend. Both it looks visually accurate to what it looked like in Gran Turismo 6, and also it gets us up to the right numbers. I have purchased the low RPM turbo, but you don't need that one. You actually want the mid-range to get the closest numbers. As you can see, 401 horsepower. The intercooler I have purchased, but you don't need it, so don't bother buying that one. You want the fully customized diff, the semi-racing clutch and flywheel, height adjustable sports suspension, and then you don't need any more weight reduction because that's good enough already. As far as the racing stuff, uh, we've got the torque vectoring center diff, which I definitely would recommend pretty much on any all-wheel drive car or four-wheel drive car, really. I have fitted it with a steering angle adapter just to help that turn in, and it definitely does help the turn in. It's a pretty savage car through corners. And then obviously the carbon prop shaft is a little bit of overkill. You could go for it, but again, I didn't want to push the car too far into racing territory because at the end of the day, it's an aftermarket tuner car, not necessarily a full-on race car. So as far as the tuning, you can see we're running 401 horsepower which is close enough to what it had in the game. I'm sure you could technically get it even more spot on, but I didn't want to have to really heavily restrict the engine. I prefer to run the engine with no restriction and just try to get the power closer if possible. And 1,210 kilos is exactly what the car weighed in Gran Turismo 6. So we've got the sports hards, of course, already fitted. For the height adjustable sports suspension, 125 mil is the ride height, one on anti-roll, which of course you can't change. 35 for the compression, 45 for the rebound, 2.05 on the springs, so not too crazy. We've got one degree of camber, which is more than enough, and of course you cannot adjust the toe with just a little bit already on the back. I've opted for 10, 10, 30, 30, and 20, 20 for the diff, and of course, importantly, a 50, 50 split. When it comes to splitting the torque, different people have wildly different preferences. Some people like to drift a bit more, some people like loads of front end grip. For me, I find that at least with the physics of Gran Turismo 7, I like a 50-50 split more often than not, because it still doesn't end up being too heavy anyway. For the transmission, like I said, I did leave that standard. I will say, if you do want to make it a little bit more competitive in, for example, career mode, you might want to upgrade the transmission. I've opted to leave it standard so it has more of an authentic road car kind of feel, but it does definitely limit your top speed. I don't recall what the top speed was, but it's only up around like 160-ish, I think, miles an hour. So it's not the quickest thing around. For an Evo, that's more than good enough. But, you know, it depends what you want to use the car for. As far as the ballast, you do want 82 kilos to bring us up to the Gran Turismo 6 weight. I've opted to actually put that all the way to the back. Not entirely necessary, but just gives it a little bit closer to a 50-50. The fully customized computer is not touched. I've got the downforce set as low as possible. Again, that's down to personal preference. The mid-range turbo, like I said, 
the anti-lag is not fitted. I guess you could if you wanted to. I don't recall it having anti-lag. I don't think the actual card did either. The intercooler, like I said, is not fitted, even though I purchased it. The sports cleaner, semi-race exhaust, and then for the rest of this stuff, you can see what we'd already fitted here. So that's it for the build. It is a pretty simple one and potentially quite a useful one. Because like you can see, it's not that much higher than 550 points. So if you were to use it for maybe some online lobbies that are at that level or whatever, you could potentially find it to be quite a weapon. So now, of course, we'll jump out to Suzuka, a very popular track, for me at least, to use my aftermarket cars. You'll have noticed I've taken quite a few of them onto Suzuka. In fact, I'm pretty sure I took all three of the mines built so far around Suzuka. I certainly did with the R32, and last month, of course, I took the Nismo Z as well, with Nismo and mines getting quite a lot of love from me and Special Projects. This one is savagely quick. I don't recall what the exact lap time was off the top of my head. Of course, you'll see it toward the end of the video, most likely, but I recall this one being, I think it was actually very close to the R32. Mines build. I recall it might have actually been just a little bit quicker. I can't remember now, but I know it was very, very quick in comparison to the other ones. It was quicker as well than the Nismo Z, which might not be too surprising, but yeah, it's certainly a savagely quick build. You can actually use its natural handling profile, even with the 50 50 split, to really throw it into a corner, and you can actually kind of get the tail out a little bit, surprisingly. But yeah, it's tremendously quick. Being an Evo, it is very forgiving. There's a little bit of understeer as you enter the corner, but then you can correct that by just breaking a little bit earlier, throw it in nice and hard, and then power out. And then you can use that little bit of tail slide on the exit to your benefit. But yeah, it's very easy to use, certainly very quick, especially for acceleration. So if you do decide to use it, if you're a Mines fan, if you're an Evo fan, I hope you enjoy it. Of course, give the designer some love from me, and naturally, check out all the other builds this week from Special Projects Pack Number 8. But I'll see you next time, and for now, thanks for watching.